Now, it doesn't matter if you're running a multi-transactional database or if you're simply running a home NAS. If you've got files that you want to keep, then you're going to want to have some form of RAID in order to have redundancy that a single hard disk failure doesn't result in data loss. Now, if you don't want to get stuck in with the hardware dependency of having a dedicated RAID controller or having RAID on the motherboard that then locks you potentially to that version, then you're going to be looking at a software-based configuration. And in the Linux world, uh, ZFS is kind of the go-to standard for this at the moment. Now, you couldn't get a more simple installation in terms of just running the app uh, install commands, etc. But before we do that, let's have a look at our test system that I spun up earlier. So we're going to do the fdisk-l, which for those of you who are not familiar with Linux, will you'll get the idea in a moment. It will spit out basically all of the disks on the system, including uh, various mount points. So since I kind of find this information a little bit difficult to read in this format, I'm going to show you an alternative way of looking at this, which is to use uh, grep, which if you're a Windows guy, then uh, find string would be the equivalent kind of thing. So we're going to use grep to basically just tell us, get all the disks. So in this case, uh, we just add and then grab, and then we say, okay, our starting characters for the disks in this case are SD, and then we're going to put behind it the brackets of getting every letter between A and Z. And you can put a number in there, which if we had partitions, we would be looking for, but in this case, we're just going to go without the partitions and give us the disk output because that's what we're getting. So as you can see, we have a total of six uh, 10 gig disks uh, that I've created in order to demonstrate the different scenarios. So four of these I'm going to use in my RAID 10 set, and I'm going to use a couple of spares and also logging and other things, but we'll get to that later. So the first thing is to go off and go ahead and install ZFF. Now there is plenty of options here. You don't need to use the package that I'm using. In fact, uh, depending on what you're doing, it's better not to use the package I'm using. So the ZFF um, Fuse works fine if you're building a standalone home media server, as an example. But if you want to use Docker or some other slightly more industry standards, use the base package, so just the ZFS. Um, you don't need the whole Fuse part. That's it's redundant for those kind of things and it's better maintained from the support point of view so just keep that in mind when you're picking a package now first thing I want to do is now go ahead and create my RAID 10 pool now I could create a RAID 5, I could create a RAID 6 I'm going with RAID 10 for two reasons um, one, I honestly believe that if you do have any form of performance uh, in terms of impact RAID 10 is the better option because when you're rebuilding the array you don't lose as much performance as you would with a RAID, let's say, 5. It also puts less um, impact on the, the overall disk structure. So to create a RAID 10 set, basically I need to create a pool and I create two mirrors within that pool. So basically there's a little bit of overlapping. Now, as you can see, we've got an error here. Now, this I noticed in particular with the uh, package I'm using which is after the installation, the service isn't running. So if I go ahead and just start the service and then run the same command, that should simply resolve the problem. And as you can see, four disks, blocks assigned, ta-da. We now have a pool created. So I'm just going to show the output for the pool very quickly to prove that it is running and all is fine. So as you can see, my pool is set up of two mirror sets and that the total storage, if I was to list storage, would be exactly half of the four disks. So next up, we're going to try something a little bit more um, complicated. We're going to add a spare. So you could have a, another disk on standby in the eventuality that a disk was to fail. So you could have basically a hot spare. So we can add to the existing pool and then the name of the spare using spare as the command so that we know what to define it as and then just the disk and if we look at that we can see there's our spare added now another option that you might want to use 
is to replace a disk. Now, sometimes replacing a disk is simple, other times not so much. So let's look at the, the basics. If we replace a disk, you need to tell it which pool and which disk it is that you want to replace it from. Now, if it's a straight uh, replace one for one, let's say you had a hot pluggable disk, you pulled the disk out, you put a new disk in, um, you don't need the second disk specification, you would just tell it the disk that you're replacing because the drive theoretically will have the same ID. So in this case, I'm trying to replace with one disk with another, and as you can see, I get an error. Now, as always, I like to keep the errors in because it's good for everyone to learn what these errors are and how they effectively look. Because even sometimes the documentation doesn't reflect the, the correct uh, syntax. So here's an example, it's telling me I can't remove the disk because it doesn't understand which disk. So if I put the slash dev slash and then the disk ID, it in fact then understands what I'm looking at. And if we then do a quick list, you can see that the disk is in fact being swapped out. So this sometimes is an example of how syntax can be very important and documentation isn't always 100% clear. But again, it can vary from package to package, so keep in mind that you may get different results. So next up, we're going to look at the other two options which are open to us at this point, which is the caching and the log. Now. To understand the caching and the log, we need to kind of take a quick detour. Caching improves read performance. So basically you can use an SSD or an NVMe drive, something that's faster than your regular hard disks, and effectively cache data there. Now the other side of this is a, a log function. So the log function, similar thing, it allows faster writes. So depending on your need, you might use one or the other, or potentially both. And what I would recommend is if you've got a big enough drive, use both but have partitions for them. So you can split your NVMe drive down the middle and say half of it's for caching, half of it's for logging, and use the two partitions separately as disks. Now, if you're creating a log drive like I am about to do, um, it's best to create mirrors because unlike the read caching where you can always go back to the original on the hard disk, with the log, because you're writing data, you don't want it to become corrupt. So the best option, even with SSD, is to have a mirror set. So you have a, a log, mirror, and then two disks, and effectively, you then have some level of redundancy. Because once data becomes corrupt, it can become really difficult to work out what was corrupted and how badly. So from this point of view, always for logs, have mirrors. For read caching, less important. Uh, you can go, of course, without this. I just don't recommend you doing so. Now, that concludes what I wanted to show you in this video. If you want more, let me know, or alternatively, you can always visit documentation for more details. Now, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. And as always, subscribe for more content.